Hello friends, this is Dave Hurwitz, Executive Editor at ColassicsToday.com, here with Dave's Faves. And today I am featuring an album, Schubert and Schumann. Voila! Here it is, the Wanderer Fantasy and the Schumann Fantasy in C Major with Maurizio Pollini on Deutsche Grammophon. This is like one of the standard piano things on my my phone. So I can play it in the car, or I can play it when I'm at the gym. Well, I walk past the gym. I'm not actually ever in the gym. And, and I have thingies in my ears, or I'm just listening at home. It's one of the great piano records, I think. I really do. First of all, the Schubert, the Wanderer Fantasy. Well, everybody, I mean, does anybody not love the Wanderer Fantasy? Is anybody like that, like, Philistine that they don't love the Wanderer fantasy. I mean, he just da 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 da, boom ba 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 ba. Oh, it's just marvelous. The thing that's so cool about the Wanderer fantasy is that it is essentially a, or Tovey called a symphonic poem for piano. The entire work is based on that opening melody, and that opening melody is transformed into the slow movement, into the scherzo, and to the fugue subject of the finale. And as a result of that, the piece has an absolutely unprecedented organic cohesion, and it's like half a century ahead of its time, formally, in terms of what Schubert actually does. Now, he wrote three late fantasies, right? There's the Wanderer, then there's the, the F minor fantasy for piano four hands, and then there's the, the uh, violin fantasy in C major. And they're all magnificent, and they're all completely different from one another. Um, in every way. But the Wanderer Fantasy has justifiably become the most famous one. Schubert himself, of course, couldn't play it. It was too difficult. He famously was trying to get through the fugue and he slammed the piano and said, the devil can play it. It was far too complicated for a pianist of his reputedly modest gifts, but who cares? It is just the most remarkable piece of music. And Polini, oh my goodness. You know, there, there are some sort of like really standout performances of the Wanderer Fantasy. There's the Richter one, the one on, on, on EMI or Warner or whatever a label's calling itself this week. And there's this one and there are a few others. But, um, it, you know, Polini at this point was at his very, very peak. The perfect sort of marriage of of intellectual force and 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 directed passion in the music. And it's just fabulous in a piece that has you know, such such a marvelous formal construction. And you might think that that would work against Polini and the Schumann, because the Schumann is not like um, the Schubert, sort of a miracle of forward-looking thematic transformation. That doesn't mean it's not a great work. It's an incredibly great work. The problem with the Schumann fantasy, I think, and this is me, because I'm not your biggest Schumann fan. I'm really not. But, uh, but I, you know, I, I love some of it. I've had to get over, I've said this before, the fact that my father gave up the piano because he was forced to play Schumann when he wanted to play jazz. And so I, I grew up with a prejudice against him, which, which has taken me many, many years to overcome. But I think I've finally gotten there and could enjoy some of this unbelievably fantastic music. The fantasy is one of the great, great romantic piano effusions and one of Schumann's, you know, shattering masterpieces in larger free forms. Because it's it's you know it's it's thirty minutes long. I mean, it's a very serious piece. It's as long as a sonata. It's better than any of Schumann's sonatas, precisely because the form is is so much more uh, improvisational and free, and he can he can do it based on what he feels rather than what he thought he ought to do formalistically. That's always a problem in romantic music, and it was a problem for Schumann. It's a problem in his symphonies, for example. So here we have this fantasy, and. Polini, you would think, as the theoretical intellectual guy, would not be so great in a fantasy, especially the first movement, which is marked durchaus fantastisch und leidenschaftlich vorzutragen. You know, in other words, throughout, all the way through, fantastical and passionate and, you know, in expression. So it's, it's yeah. But he manages it effortlessly, he really does, because he was not all brain and no feeling. That's always a myth. You just, you just don't have human beings who are like that. 
And, you know, Polini does give the work a, a sense of cohesion and an organicism, which is absolutely wonderful. And it's important because the trouble with the fantasy, and I think with a lot of performances, is that the first movement, the first movement is so fabulously cool sounding that the rest of it can fall a little bit flat. It takes a little bit of imagination to to raise the other two movements, I think, to the level of the first. Some of you disagree with me with that. We've talked about this, and, and I, I respect that. I really do. But that's how it's always struck me. And Polini has no problem at all. I mean, he's up there with the very best ones, and the best ones by the crazy spontaneous people, the Argariches or Kissin or those people, you know, who are, you know, more feeling than brain, supposedly. But in the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, great art always requires both. And that's what you get on this stunning recording of two fantasies, one by Schubert, one by Schumann, and the entire disc is a dream come true. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.